everybody, it's Emily at Arc Schooling, and today I'm going to be doing a book haul. I think I have like 25 books, so I'm going to try to be like as concise as I can. Let's just dive in and we'll talk about it as I go. I have a few things here that I purchased for school. And I'm going to do a separate video, I think, where I talk about like our school stuff that like we're doing for Regina's year six, but just I had a couple things in this pile. So the first book I want to talk about is The Nerviest Girl in the World by Melissa Wiley. This was much anticipated. I pre-ordered this like almost six months ago. I think as soon as I knew that it existed, I pre-ordered it. This is a story about a girl who lives around like the 1920s, I think, like at the very beginnings of film. And she and her brothers work as stunt doubles, I guess, doing stunts for movies. So it's like early film and stunts and a girl like being adventurous and it just sounds great. So this is probably going to be our very first read aloud of the year. We're doing a world geography year. We're starting in America. And I wanted something on the West Coast because we haven't read that yet. So we're going to be reading this because it takes place in California. Then I have bought, I've, I've already talked about this on my Build Your Library Instagram, but I'm obsessed with this book already. This is the National Geographic People of the World, and it is gorgeous. Ugh. I can't even. I, I love reading books about like different cultures, different places. This book is just gorgeous. It is about people groups and tribes and that sort of thing all over the world. I love that it has like a world map at the beginning that gives you like color coded like where um, each section is going to take place. But it doesn't have a ton of information for each. It just kind of gives a brief synopsis sort of of their culture and like how they came to be, what, how they live now, that sort of thing. But it, it's pretty like concise. There's a lot of information in here. Does it cover everything? I don't know. So I, it's probably somewhat limited, but it even so it's a, it covers a lot. I'm really excited to use this in our geography studies and I'm probably going to read it cover to cover at some point because I'm obsessed. <laughs> I also picked this up for our morning basket, Amazon's Abolitionists and Activists, A Graphic History of Women's Fight for Their Rights by Mickey Kendall and A. Damasio. And I am excited about this. We've, I've always tried to include some kind of like interesting people book in our morning basket. And so this is going to be what we use this year. It's a graphic novel, which my daughter is obsessed with. So that's going to be a highlight, I think, for our morning basket this year. And so I'm planning on reading this as well as a few other things to like add to our cool people to know about kind of thing, which I'm trying to aim at, at being very diverse, lots of women, cool women to know about um, from different parts of the world. So I'm excited about that book. A lovely customer of mine was telling me about this book that she wrote and I thought it was, it sounded fantastic. And that is Holy Troublemakers and Unconventional Saints by Deneen Ackers. But a lovely customer, Deneen Ackers, was kind enough to send me a copy of this book that she wrote, and it's just lovely. And I'm excited to include it in our morning basket. So basically, what this is, and what I'm going for here, we're studying world religions this year along with our world geography, and so I wanted to include something about different religions beyond just like here's this religion and what they believe. So when she mentioned this book I got excited because I thought this potentially would fit exactly what I'm looking for. So this covers a variety of people of different faiths from around the world and it gives a little biography about them. And I'm excited about it because it's diverse, there's lots of representation, it sounds like a great resource. I have not done more than just flip through it, but so far I'm excited. The, the illustrations are very pretty. It's very respectful from the little bit that I've read. So if you're worried about it being like anti, any, it's not. Um, it's very respectful of different religions and different ways of being a human. And so I'm very excited to include that in our morning basket. 
I'm gonna go more into our school stuff in the next video I film because I'm getting all of that organized. We start school in a couple of days, so I'm like, ah, getting everything together. So I will be doing a video on that. I'm not gonna talk more on that stuff right now. So let's get into the rest of my piles here. I read several ARCs in the last few months and some of them I liked enough to buy a final copy. First of those is The Assignment by Liza Weimer. This book is wonderful. It's about a, an assignment given to a class at school where the, the students in this class are asked to debate for and against the Nazi final solution to kill all of the Jews. And some of the students in the class are offended that this is even a thing that they're being asked to do and decide that they're going to stand up for themselves and they're not going to do it. And it becomes this whole thing. And I, what I liked about this is that I read a book called The Wave several years ago and I thought the premise was fascinating but it was so short that I felt like it didn't really get into the meat of what I wanted it to and so when I heard about this I thought finally it's gonna do what I wanted to do I'm gonna get the meat that I was missing from that other book and it does to a point but I feel like it could have gone even deeper this was interesting because it touched on different perspectives so it didn't just focus on the two students that were were against the assignment but it showed like the the, the perspective of the teacher who assigned it and different students in the school and it went into pretty good detail i think about you know how an assignment like that affects different people and it talked a bit about like the ramifications on not just the students in the class but on the the school itself on the town that the school is in how it affects people even nationwide when something goes viral about it and they have to like kind of you see the ugliness of social media and that sort of thing so anyway i thought this was really well done and I highly recommend picking it up then i have we are not free by tracy chi which might be my favorite book of the year I'm not like official on that yet, but it's it's a potential. This book was just wonderful. It ta it's about Japanese internment and it follows a group of teenagers who were all living through the internment and their friend group and different things related to that, but like their perspectives. I just freaking loved this book so much. It made me cry. This is maybe the first book I read this year that I fully like I cried. I couldn't hold it together. <laughs> I was very, very invested in this group of, of teenagers and what was happening to them and the way they viewed the world and how they related to each other and I, ugh, mm, I just, I loved it. I loved it so much. Um, I need to read more of her books. I've already purchased and I think I've hauled already another Tracy G book that I, I think it's called The Reader that I haven't picked up yet but I'm very excited to because I just thought this was spectacular. Highly recommend. You should all read it. The other arc that I decided to go ahead and buy a final copy was a new Rebecca Stead novel, The List of Things That Will Not Change. I thought this was sweet and I really wanted my daughter to read it, which is why I bought a copy, because she doesn't have an e-reader, so I wanted to have a copy here for her to read, because I think she would enjoy this. This story follows a 10-year-old girl dealing with the, her parents' divorce, and it was a fairly amicable divorce, which I don't, I mean, I can't relate to that, because that's not my family's experience, <laughs> but I thought it was beautiful to read about. Um, they divorced because the father realized that he was gay so they had they divorced and now he's getting remarried to his boyfriend and I thought the way that this was handled in the book was done extremely well very respectful very beautiful to see their relationship and to see B the main character's name is B to see her relationship with her father and her new stepfather or soon-to-be stepfather she she's an only child and her father's boyfriend has a daughter so now she's gonna have a sister it's just I loved I love books <laughs> middle grade books that sound like a child one of my biggest pet peeves is an adult in middle grade trying to sound like a middle grade author trying too hard to sound young and it just comes off as ridiculous I hate that I run into that a lot I read a lot of middle grade and so when I find a book that uh, sounds authentically like a 10 year old girl it makes me happy. <laughs> so this book was really great 
and I'm a huge Rebecca Stead fan now. I've only read two of her books, but I must read all of them, which I'm about to show you. I bought some. <laughs> I bought some more of her books. Because I liked that so much, I decided I should read more Rebecca Stead. So far, I've read When You Reach Me and The List of Things That Will Not Change, and I own Bob, which she co-wrote with Wendy Mass, but I haven't read it yet. But I went ahead and bought a few more because I just want to read more of her writing. So I have Goodbye Stranger, which I'm not sure what any of these are about, to be honest. This, I think, is about a friend group dealing with just fr girl problems and that sort of thing. I'm sorry, I'm going to be terrible giving synopsis right now because I bought these ages ago and I don't remember. Um, then I have Liar and Spy, and this one is about, and I like, I think all of her books pretty much, except for a few, take place in New York City. And this is a New York City book. I think Goodbye Stranger is as well. This one is about George who moves into a new apartment in Brooklyn and meets a new friend when he goes to a meeting when he, he finds a sign on a door that says Spy Club meeting today and he goes to the meeting and spying and things ensue. So this sounded really cute. And then I have First Light which is about a boy whose parents take him on an expedition to Greenland and they so this takes place in the Arctic which is what drew me to it because we're doing a world geography year and there's not a lot of books honestly that take place in the Arctic or in Antarctica so when I find things like that I get excited so I'm I'm not even I don't know it says it's a mystic thriller that's one of the blurbs on the back so I don't really know too much about it, but I think this is probably going to be a read aloud. I have Tesla's Attic by Neil Schusterman and Eric Elfman. I just, I, I don't know how I've never heard of this series that he wrote, but I should have it because I'm on a quest. I'm going to read all the Schusterman. Um, this one is about a boy who I believe literally moves into Tesla's house and discovers some cool stuff in the attic and adventures happen. That's really all I know. And that's really all I need going in. I don't know. I bought this just because I wanted to read it, but there's the small chance that I end up enjoying it enough that I want to stick this in level 11. I have to do updates on like all the different things. All the books, all the books that are going out of print are out of stock and becoming hard to find. So I'm scrambling right now <laughs> trying to fix all of that. It's been, it's been a situation. But when I get to the level eight update, if I've read this by then, <laughs> there's a chance because I just think this would be a good fit there. I have The Season of Sticks Malone by Kekla Magoon. I read one of her books when I wrote level 12 and loved it. And so I'm on a quest to read more of her writing because I thought that book was wonderful. This one is about friendships and loyalty and a, I guess two brothers have a are spending a summer in the woods in Indiana and they meet their new neighbor Styx Malone who is older and very cool and they want to be like him and I don't really know too much more than that and it sounds fun I, I wanted to read it this summer but I didn't get there because it does sound like a fun summer read but I'm still excited to pick it up I have Ink Knows No Borders Poems of the Immigrant and Refugee Experience edited by Patrice Vision and Alyssa Raymond. I bought this with the level seven in mind because like I said, we're gonna be doing world geography. We're not quite doing level seven as written because that's just not how I roll. Even when it's my own stuff, <laughs> I don't know how to follow like things that are written down. That's my own issue. But anyway, I've been collecting things for that. So I, I bought this because I'm always interested in interesting poetry compilations and I don't know if this is actually going to go into level seven when I update but it could it depends on how much we we enjoy it I'm throwing this in our morning basket then I have the bone sparrow by Zana Frelo and what is this I don't remember what this is oh yes okay I bought this because this is a story from the perspective of aboriginal Australians I could be wrong on that, but I'm fairly certain that's why I bought it. Oh my gosh, the naked hardcover is so pretty. I don't know if you guys, so you can kind of see how like the blue lines on the cover have like little white spots in them. The naked hardcover is like that same kind of blue. It's so pretty and there's a bird on it. Oh, I love it. Okay, sorry, I'm easily distracted. So anyway, this story is about 
Subi, who is a refugee, and he's born in an Australian permanent detention center after his mother and sister fled the violence of a distant homeland. So, I was very intrigued because I'm always looking for things that take place in Australia. I don't really know a whole lot about it. I'm pretty sure this is young adult, not middle grade, but I could be wrong. I have To Be Taught If Fortunate, a novella by Becky Chambers. I loved The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, and I've been meaning to read the rest of that series, but meanwhile I saw that she had a novella out and bought that because why not? So I don't know what this is beyond a novella that is sci-fi. I think there might be something to do with AI in it or space flight. I don't know, but I'm excited to find out. When I was almost done with level 6 update, I was like, I'm gonna buy myself some treats <laughs> because I've earned it. So I bought three books that like I was rewarding myself with. First I bought The Night Watch by Sarah Waters because I want to read all of her books. I have not read more than one, <laughs> but I'm going to. This one is a World War II story that made it more exciting for me because you know I'm obsessed with anything to do with World War II. But it, I believe it takes place in London, so I'm assuming Blitz. So I'm, I'm hoping that I'm going to read this during the Buzz Wordathon because Night is in the title and I want to read that particular book. I also bought myself The Midnight Library by Matt Haig and I went specifically to Book Depository to purchase this because I really wanted to buy it, but I wanted this cover. I, the American cover just doesn't look as nice. I don't know. I was particular because I kept, I follow Matt Haig on social media and I'd kept seeing this cover when he would talk about it. So when I saw the American book, I went, no, <laughs> I don't want that. So I went and bought this on B Book Depository so I could have the, so that I could get the UK version. And I love that the inside has this in it. It's just, I don't know if that's just the UK or if this is on in all of the books, but I thought that was delightful. So this, if I'm understanding it correctly, is sort of a, um, a fantasy-ish story about a woman who dies and she feels like she, she regrets a lot of the choices she made in her life and is given the opportunity upon death to experience all these different lives she could have had had she not made the choices that she made and, and she does this through this library that she gets to like check out stories about her life I think I'm, I'm probably getting that a little bit wrong but it sounds wonderful and heartwarming and I'm just I'm excited I want to read more Matt Haig I've only read his children's books so far and I'd like to read more and then because I was on book depository to order that I thought why not treat myself to another one of the Discworld books that they have the most beautiful editions. So I have um, Guards Guards, which I think is like the sixth or seventh book in the series. I'm not sure. Eighth. Eighth book in the series. I don't, I'm just sort of collecting them. I own several. I have three in this edition. Now I have four. I didn't, I didn't go in order because I specifically wanted this. I've heard several people lately mentioning this particular Discworld book and I'd like, I should read that. So I have this beautiful edition out and it's just, mm, it's beautiful. This, uh, th these editions are just the loveliest and I am a huge fan of hard covers without dust jackets. Okay, I'm almost done. A few more books. So I picked up sort of on a whim. This is my America by Kim Johnson. I'd heard someone talking about it. I know it's a debut and I think it has to do with the criminal justice system. I had also bought a while back, where is it, yeah, I bought a middle grade novel from the desk of Zoe Washington, I think, too, that is on the same basic topic. I believe the, the main character in this, her father is on death row and he's innocent and she's trying to help get him off of death row. And so I was, I was interested to read this because I've heard a lot of things. I also want to get, what is it called, The Black Kids, which I think has to do with, um, the Rodney King beating in um, LA in 1992, I think. So I almost bought it at the same time as this, but I was, I, no, I stopped myself. But I'm excited to pick this up because it's Blur by Nick Stone and I loved um, Dear Martin, which I also hear that there's a sequel to that coming out, which I need to get. Off tangents. I have Grass by Kum Suk Gendry Kim. 
and this I bought in my quest. I want to read more things that take place during World War II in that time period, but in Asia because I've not read a ton of things like that and I just, I want to, I want to read more of that. So the few things that I have read, I've really like found thought provoking and interesting and I'm excited to pick this up. This is about a comfort, comfort women, I believe. During the war, the Japanese would basically like kidnap Korean women and force them into prostitution and so that's what this is about and it sounds harrowing but it's a graphic novel and it's black and white so I think I think it's gonna read pretty quickly even though it's pretty hefty but I'm very excited to pick this up at Sarah's behest I picked up things a bright girl can do by Sally Nichols this is a young adult book about women's suffrage I believe so yeah this is in 1914 so it follows um some suffragettes and so I actually want to pick this up sometime too because I haven't read a ton. I've read several books that take place during that time period but nothing specifically besides a biography or two. So I'm excited to see some historical fiction about that. Then I bought Running by Natalia Sylvester. I actually bought this thinking I was going to do a whole lit unit to go along with the election unit study and that did not happen. <laughs> I couldn't find a middle grade that I liked enough to write a whole literature study about so and then I was like I don't even it's not geared toward high school why am I putting a young adult in so I ended up not doing it I'm gonna probably pick this up more closer to November possibly I don't know or not at all I don't know what I'm gonna get to this but this is a story about a Cuban American girl whose father is running for president and it's sort of her experience being part of his campaign unwillingly she doesn't really feel like she's a political person. She doesn't want to be involved in this. She's more of a private person and now everyone's looking at her and she's struggling a bit with that. And so this is sort of her learning how to stand up for herself and like maybe not agree with everything her father says and does. So I'm interested to pick that up sometime. I also have Stand Up Yumi Chung by Jessica Kim, which is a book a middle grade book about a girl who becomes a stand-up comedian and the main protagonist I believe is a Korean American girl and it sounds cute. I, I kept almost buying this and Sarah finally was like you have to buy this so I bought it and I think honestly I'm gonna give this to my 11 year old to read this year because I think she could do this one on her own and I think she'll enjoy it. So this will probably be one of her readers this year. I have two books left. I have Broken Strings by Eric Walters and Kathy Racer. This takes place in 2002, right after 9-11 has happened, and it follows our main character, Shirley Berman, who um, has just dealt with the death of her beloved grandmother, and she's trying out for the role of, I believe, Seidel potentially. It doesn't say which le lead role in Fiddler on the Roof. I'm not sure which daughter is the lead role in Fiddler on the Roof, but anyway, I'll get, get to that when I read it, I guess. So she's auditioning for that and ends up getting the part of the Jewish mother, and to sort of get more into the role, she starts hunting around her grandparents' attic and discovers a strange violin. And when she tries to ask her Zadie what that is, he gets very angry and she starts to dig deeper and learn what this violin is and what it, why it makes him so upset. And I believe it has to do with the Holocaust. And this book was blurbed as being similar to The Devil's Arithmetic, which is one of my all-time favorite Holocaust-related books. So I'm very interested to pick this up. And then the last book I'm going to show you, my pile is getting very wobbly and I'm nervous. The last book I'm going to show you I kind of bought on a whim and I didn't really need to buy any new things to read for Halloween spooky times because I have a lot of horror on my shelves already but I kept seeing this get talked about. Clown in a Cornfield by Adam Cesar. 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 I don't know how to say names. But anyway, <laughs> I feel like such a dork every time I have to pronounce a name and I'm just like, I have no idea. Anyway, this is like a YA slasher. I've read a, a few other slasher type stories in the past and have not loved them, which I mean, 
to be fair, slashers have a specific, like, way of, of telling a story where you don't actually get to know the characters very well, so that's probably part of the reason why I've not enjoyed them in the past, but I've been hearing really good things. So I'm, I'm hoping this will be the book. The book that like makes me like slasher stories again. So I don't really know a whole lot besides there's a clown that kills people, obviously. Um, and it's about this girl who's, I guess they just moved to this weird new town and they have a clown for their school's mascot. So there's, that's where the clown mur murderer comes into play, I guess. I'm going to try to read this soon because I'm in a spooky mood. I'm looking to read more horror over the next couple of months because I haven't read any really more than like one book, I think, in the last six months that can be considered horror. So I'm, I'm in the mood. So anyway, that's going to happen soon. My stack is very scary. I'm going to have someone help me put this in my lap. Okay, anyway, hey, look at this. It fits so nice and neat in my lap. So I bought, what did I say, 25, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, I was right, 25. I bought 25 books in the month of August and I'm very excited, they're so pretty. I've been making space and cleaning and purging on my shelves. I was so proud of myself, I don't know if you guys can't really see because now I'm blocking it, but the shelf right here behind me. This section here is my American history book section, and so I'd had all the level six books on a cart in my room, and I'm like, how am I gonna put these on the shelf? There's no room. But I did some purging, I did some rearranging, and I fit everything, and I'm so proud. So now I have to find some homes for these. Some of these are gonna go on my rainbow shelf, I think. I don't know yet, but I'm gonna, I'm making space. I've been doing a lot of purging lately and I'm very proud of myself getting rid of the things. So I'm excited to replace those books with new books. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Did you get any new books lately? Let me know down below in the comments and we can chat about it. Have you read any of these? Should I prioritize anything? Let me know. If there's something in this haul that you really want me to read, let me know and I will get to it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Happy reading. Bye.